Hello, uh, it's good to be here and uh, my name is Mark Gunderson and uh, I'm a product of uh, the South Dakota School for the Deaf. I graduated in 1967 uh, after I entered in the fall of 1954 uh, when I first came. A uh, number of interesting things, uh, uh, maybe some of my stories about when I entered the school. Uh, when I first was born they found that I was deaf but uh, they didn't realize the extent of my deafness until I was about two. My grandfather uh, told my mother, hey, what if this guy's deaf, you know, this little kid? So she took me in and, and they did a hearing test and sure enough, they found out that I did have a, a significant hearing loss. I was deaf. So then they uh, called the school for the deaf and said, well, what do we do? And uh, at the age of two, they said, well, uh, my parents said, we found out uh, my son is, is deaf and this is back in 54. So. They said, well, wait till uh, he uh, gets to be about a first grader and then he can come to the deaf school. And so <clears throat> I didn't have a lot of communication, but boy, I tell you, we had a lot of love in our household and, and that's probably more so important than anything else. And that's uh, contributed to my ability to pick things up later on in life. So when I first got to school, I was just in awe and there was all the sign language going on and I picked up the language. Uh, so fast and uh, it was just a wonderful thing for me. Kind of a fun and interesting story was that uh, originally, see I grew up on a farm uh, before I came to school. My, my father was a farmer and uh, I was outside playing with some of the boys and, and the girls usually played at a different place. Uh, but we were in primary hall together uh, and so we were all playing and <coughs> I felt like, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. And uh, I saw this big tree uh, off to the side, so I thought, well, I'll just go over there and went to the bathroom, uh, just like I would have back on the farm. Uh, but I didn't realize that, you know, this tree is right off the tree. So I did my business and went playing, and, and then a uh, house parent uh, came up to me and said, uh, did you go to the bathroom outside by that tree over there? You don't do that around here. We need to go indoors and use the indoor toilet. Oh, okay, I'll have to do that. And uh, the first and last time uh, that I went uh, to the bathroom right off of 10th Street there. So just just a kid. <coughs> Other stories. I remember in the primary hall we slept way up on the third floor. Uh, it was just kind of a dormitory type uh, environment. Beds uh, and bunks were all next to each other. And I think it was probably my first or second night, and my mother was upset, uh, and the house parent came and said, uh, you, know, you know, let's just rock in the chair to make me fall asleep, and, and, and so uh, that's how I dealt with it, uh, being away from home. That's difficult for me. At the school, uh, they always advertised uh, to parents that uh, if you have uh, deaf children, uh, this is a good place to be, a deaf school, we have a dorm, and so they were videotaping us, and uh, I remember I got up one morning, and our, our bed was messy, and uh, I, was, uh, I was smiling, and, and I tried to cover my messy bed with uh, another blanket, but uh, I wonder if the school still has that film of me being a kid as part of the recruitment materials that they developed. Well, let's see, what else can I say? Uh, went to the boys' dorm after being in primary hall. My parents would always uh, come and pick me up on Fridays so we could spend uh, the weekends at home. But during my middle school years, uh, I had a lot of good memories, a lot of uh, things that I was involved with. And <laughs> I just have to say that the School for the Deaf made a lot of good products, uh, made me the person I am today. We had a lot of diversity here. It was a great school. And uh, we had a lot of opportunities to participate in sports and athletics. And <clears throat> I know a lot of people don't like it when I talk but uh, about this. Uh, but, uh, you know, with us growing up, uh, we had to shovel <coughs> the walks. And so, I don't know if that would be a child labor issue today, but uh, boy, we had to do a lot of things here on campus. Uh, we had to do laundry, and <coughs> we had a laundry facility you know, with staff. We did all the, the school's laundry, and the boys were the ones that had to you know, haul the laundry back and forth from the laundry facility to the dorms. And 
And then in the dining room, we had to wash dishes. Um, they had some machinery. But again, uh, I don't know if they could get away with some of this today with child labor, but we had to do a lot of the actual washing and drying. and So it was constantly work to do. <coughs> we never earned anything for it. I don't think they started paying people until later. Uh, maybe that's because of child labor laws, I don't know. But uh, kind of interesting, our experience growing up. Uh, so that was one thing, but uh, let's see. There, there's one uh, funny thing that I thought I would share. Uh, in my senior year, uh, it was about graduation time. Uh, <clears throat> I remember they had Balser, who was uh, the president of uh, Gallaudet College, or excuse me, uh, Augustana College, and uh, so they were giving us cards, uh, with, you know, with diploma. That person was the uh, commencement speaker and we were shaking hands going through the line and um, then it was time to uh, take the gown off, the you know, graduation gown, and I put the cards aside and took my gown off and, and then I told my friends goodbye for the summer and so I grabbed all my stuff and I left and luckily I didn't leave the campus but when I looked I actually took Fred's cards, his pile of, and his diploma, and I thought, oh, mine must be missing. So we found out that someone took mine, and I took theirs, and so we exchanged all of our cards and our, our diplomas, and we almost uh, parted ways with, uh, without getting our, our right materials, so that was another good, fun memory. <laughs>